Bard really made me hyped for full casters, so let's see if Cleric is just as insane. Welcome to Pack Tactics, where we have the power of God and Gators on our side. Yeah! Spell casting. Spell preps are no longer based on spell slots. And clerics no longer get access to find steed. I'm fine with both of them. Next, Divine Order. This is now a level 1 feature. And Thaumaturgy and Scholar are now combined. The problem now is that they removed the good part of Thaumaturgy and what is left is not that great compared to Protector. Interestingly, the regain one expended use of your channel divinity whenever you finish a short rest is now just part of channel divinity in general. Which is probably why it's gone now. Ah! Speak of the devil. Channel divinity as a feature has gone back from level 1 to level 2. It basically swapped places with divine order. The uses which were based on your proficiency bonus last time are now based on the table. Compared to 5e, clerics now get more channel divinity uses, but only get one use back per short rest instead of all of them. I think those two changes kind of balance each other out. Divine Spark is no longer proficiency bonus based. This is not a gigantic deal, I would say. The lower healing won't make that much of a difference, and the damage isn't amazing in either version. Turn on Dead no longer makes its targets run off like they would in 5e. Instead, they become unable to use their actions and bonus actions. And they're unable to get closer if they fail to save. It's not a bad change, but it's kind of like random. Like the 5e version didn't really need help at all. It didn't need a change. But whatever, it's fine. The upgrade to Turn on Dead at level 5 Smite Undead has been clarified to not stop the effect from the former, which is nice, and now deals damage based on your Wisdom modifier instead of your Proficiency bonus. I think this is good too. I like this way more than how Destroy Undead works in 5e, because this iteration works on all creatures affected by Turn Undead. It's not just certain CR creatures, which is incredibly hard to guess without foreknowledge. Or the DM just telling you what it is. You probably can't one-shot creatures like you could before, but hey, at least this is more consistent. There's been many times I've seen clerics cast turn undead and then forget completely that they have destroy undead. Hopefully they won't forget this this time. Subclass progression. They said they would return back to the old version, and they did that for all the other versions, except for cleric for some reason. In 5e, you pick your subclass at level 1, which is really good. Now they removed that and put it at level 3. Literally everyone on the internet is asking for an earlier subclass progression, and you just undid that. I don't understand. 7th level, Blessed Strikes has been made unnecessarily lengthy. It's not hard to understand or anything, but I don't believe the two options here are necessary. The last playtest with Cleric did it quite well because it just gave you both of them. Which isn't a big power boost, by the way. I'm guessing people didn't like it in the survey, which is kind of weird, but... Fine, okay. Either way, it's not a big deal for me, I don't care. At level 9, you get Commune for free. Commune is a good spell if you know how to use it, but uh, I don't think majority of people know how to use it. I'm gonna rate this a bad feature. It's probably really boring for most people, but it's a good spell. They should really just make this a real feature instead. Improved Blessed Strikes at level 14 is a little weird. Why doesn't both of them just deal more damage? Again, an unnecessary divide. Here we go, I saved the best for last, and this is insane. Divine Intervention at level 10. To summarize the 5e version really quickly, you have to roll a percentile dice, and then maybe God will do something for you. It can be like a spell or even something really creative. Maybe the DM comes up with something really fun. It's really hard to actually activate this feature, but once it does, and especially at a really important moment, it will become like a massive highlight in your entire campaign. This might even change your character because this is God intervening, and that is super rare. Out of all the features in the game, this feels like a relic from the 80s. Classic Dungeons and Dragons. Well, that's at least how I feel. You might disagree with me. Now in the new version, you get to cast any divine spell of 5th level or lower as an 
action. This is crazy good. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have heard of a spell called Hollow. It's, it's a pretty obscure spell with a 24 hour casting time. It's a fifth level spell and with divine intervention, you can just cast it as an action now. The spell is so massive that I can barely fit it all on the screen here. You have to go in D&D Beyond and look for yourself. But basically it has a set of super strong effects. I recommend you read it right now because it's actually really funny. Other really funny overpowered options are Planar Binding and Magic Circle. There's bound to be more, but... <laughs> I don't feel like looking for all of them. I think this feature is way too strong. My solution would be the following. In 5e, it's actually unclear if concentration was even required for the spell effect provided by divine intervention. But in this iteration, it is obvious. I think they should remove the ability to cast any spell as an action, but in return allow the player to cast a spell without needing to concentrate on it. Yeah, you could basically cast two concentration spells at once, but it's really not a big deal once a day. Especially compared to what they get now. Are you kidding me? If you don't believe me, read Hollow again. The upgrade to Divine Intervention is now called Greater Divine Intervention. Guys, this is Wish. You know all those times I've been mad at marshals? Well, I have a good reason. <laughs> they don't get anything remotely close to this level of power. Now, don't get me wrong, I do like this feature, but I do have some problems with it. They really, really, really need to remove the part where you are immune to the stress effect of Wish. I've talked about this before in the Sorcerer playtest. With enough time, the entire party is immune to all damage types in the entire game. And more! This is not okay! What did you guys write in the in the sorcerer playtest? Am I crazy? Am I reading this wrong? Like... <laughs> That's the base cleric. I'll say my opinion about the base cleric at the end of the video. Let's just move on to subclasses. Life cleric. Last time they showed up, they lost their first level spells in their domain spells. And now they're back, and it's also nice to see that spiritual weapon wasn't returned to this list. That spell really sucks in this playtest. Discipline of life was cleaned up a bit. Life berry is still gone. Preserve life was changed completely, and now it's completely useless. I don't see any reason to cast this anymore. You get four channel divinities max, and I don't think there's a spell that's clutch enough for me to want to spend the prerequisite amount of channel divinity usages to cast it. Maybe I'll use it if I ran out of spell slots, I don't know. Blessed Healer is back at level 6, and Supreme Healing was buffed slightly. This subclass is still really boring and bad. They really need to do something about this. Next up is Light Cleric. This is one of my favorite subclasses in 5e. It's actually really strong. Let's see how much they've changed it. They lost their bonus cantrip. Oh no! Well, anyways. I'm fine with the domain spells. I'm really happy they still have fireball. They didn't lose any of their outstanding options and they didn't get anything great. So this is like whatever. Warding Flare and Improved Flare has been combined. This is a great change. This was always one of the most disappointing parts of this subclass. I'm also happy to see it works on creatures that can't be blinded now as well. Radiance of the Dawn is basically unchanged. Yip yip hooray! I was actually really worried about this feature. Cobalt is my favorite feature! You go Kabal. Yeah, I know. When you get this, it's super strong. It's great. Next, instead of improved flare, they now get a new feature at level 6 called Revealing Light. It basically gives you C invisibility as a bonus action without expending a spell slot, as well as being able to share its effects with your allies close by. It also lights you up, which can be a bit of a giveaway to enemies, but it might not be a big deal. And I also think it's quite fitting to the whole light cleric theme, so you know, I'm, I'm fine with it. At this level, I would like Radiance of the Dawn to scale up a little bit more, but other than that, this is completely fine. Next feature. I don't think I can mention the name of this feature because you YouTube will think I'm talking about something completely different. And I don't want the automatic bot to put me in a thing. Anyways, this feature also works with your additional channel divinity option, which is cool. I'm still a fan of this subclass. I'm very happy. Me too! 
Next up is Trickery Cleric. I've actually managed to get from level 1 to 20 with Trickery Cleric alone. So Trickery Cleric holds a special place in my heart. The way they are in 5e is surprisingly super strong, but for the wrong reason. Let's see if they swapped it around, and if they did, then this is basically a brand new subclass. And I don't think that would be a bad thing. Here we go, a lot of changes to their domain spells. Mirror image is gone, that's very good. I'll probably do a video about why that spell is bad in the future, because I got a lot of comments about it. Hypnotic pattern was added. I don't know how much they've changed that in 1D&D &D because they don't share everything in the playtest. It's really hard to judge the power of casters when you have no idea what happened to the spells. But right now, I think that's an excellent addition. Polymorph is gone. I mean, it wasn't fitting to the trickery theme, but it was still awesome to have Polymorph on the list. The fourth level cleric list has always been really bad. So having Polymorph here is like, oh, but it's probably a good thing that it's not here, even though it's an insanely fun spell. It just doesn't fit here. Confusion replacing Polymorph really sucks, but... It, it just fits. The new 5th level spells aren't really great either. The reason why they were super strong in 5e was because of the spell list. They got the correct spells at the correct time, which made them really powerful. I don't think that legacy will live on, but who knows, I might be wrong. Here we go, Invoke Duplicity no longer requires you to concentrate on it. And it is a bonus action to use. That's awesome. I, I think this is super cool. You even get to swap around places with it like an Echo Knight. <laughs> I'm so happy. This is so good. I'm also happy that they balance the duplicity. You need to actually be on the battlefield to use it. It's not like the new stupid warlock where you could just sit in town. I'm sold. I want to play this. This looks fun. Instead of Cloak of Shadows, which sucked, they get a new feature called Trickster Magic. I really like this. It also works very nicely with Hypnotic Pattern. Improved Duplicity is a little weird. It's not a bad feature, but it looks like they just kind of experimented. I think this would be more fun with the old capstone, because there you can get four duplicates of yourself. Imagine juggling around and teleporting with your duplicates. That sounds so fun. I wouldn't say it's overpowered. It's a capstone. You get it at 17th level. This trickery cleric just stole the show of the entire class and subclasses. This is amazing. I love this new subclass. I actually think this is strong for the right reason now. This is amazing. It's really close to being perfect. They just gotta boost the capstone and then that's it. Finally, we have war domain cleric. I've never really liked this one in 5e. Their domain Main spells are still really sad. Warpriest got a big change. They now get weapon masteries on martial weapons. I am generally of the opinion that half casters and full casters especially shouldn't get weapon masteries. But I never thought about the war cleric. And I have to admit, this is kind of fitting to the war cleric. But weapon masteries isn't really that good either. You don't have a huge advantage with it. I do like that you don't actually need to take the attack action now for the bonus action option. Normally at higher levels, this would be really bad without extra attack. I do like this, but I haven't really made up my mind on the weapon masteries part. I don't know what to feel about that. As for Guided Strike, there's less uncertainty when to use it, and you can also share it with your friends. I think this is super fitting for the War Cleric. I really like this feature. You guys know that I'm a sucker for team features in this team game. Next, War God's Blessings basically gives you access to an improved Shield of Faith. Shield of Faith is a decent spell. I do pick it up. It's good for doorway dodging, but it isn't anything exciting and it's not really that much of an upgrade. I think a real feature should be here, not a spell. That's the gist of the subclass. I think this needs another lock. If I were them, I would also build a sort of Warcaster-esque feature into Warpriest. That would make it a lot easier for them to cast spells. In general, I actually really like this cleric, but Divine Intervention and its upgrade really requires another lock. And a nerf. I need to talk about Bard real quick. I don't think Bard overshadows this or anything. There's still mechanical reasons to pick Cleric. Well, anyways, that's the end of the video. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to support me on Patreon, you can. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye!